Hello everybody, it is Calm Little Buddy, and uh, this is a video that I've been putting off making for a while, um, but I figured it was, uh, it was time to put it up, it was time to at least have something that when people have questions or when people uh, kind of wonder what's going on with me uh, and my schedule and things like that, this is at least something that I can have out there that I can refer to. Um, I tend to be a pretty open person when it comes to issues, especially when it comes to like mental health issues uh, that I've had in the past or even in the present. Um, and I'm relatively open about my physical issues as well, but uh, you know, I, and I know a lot of people have heard this story uh, or at least know the story and understand what I've gone through since, um, March 2020, but maybe, you know, maybe there are some people who don't know this story or uh, there are people who don't know the updated version of the story and where it, uh, where it's at. And I think uh, part of that is, uh, part of that is my fault and I do need to not apologize, but um, need to come clean that my health is not uh, perfect. It's not great as far as, uh, well, it's not bad. It's just, it's, it fluctuates. There are some problems with it uh, from time to time. Um, nothing, nothing that I think is uh, life-threatening or uh, it's more quality of life at this point. Uh, but the story is basically, and uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to say the C word, so you might want to block your ears. Uh, I developed... I uh, got infected with COVID in March of 2020. Now, this is before there were tests. This is before, well, there were tests, but they, they weren't widespread tests. This is before there was a lot of knowledge about it. People didn't even understand the symptoms of COVID. It was a respiratory illness as far as they were concerned. So if you weren't dying of a respiratory illness, you didn't have COVID and it didn't warrant a test. This was true even all the way through until May of 2020. Uh, they would reserve antigen tests uh, to see if you'd had it in the past for people that uh, were critical. Which to me says, why do you want to check if they've had it in the past if they're critical? That's, you know, if, but anyway, whole another story. I'll run it down briefly for you guys. Around March 3rd of 2020, my son got very ill, uh, ill enough where we had to take him to the emergency room. Uh, he could not stop vomiting and uh, was passing out. His eyes were rolling up in the back of his head. It's completely terrible, horrible. One of the worst nights of my life. He was about, uh, he was three years old, going to be four years old in a couple months. And uh, it was, it was just an awful thing to have to go through. And of course, um, they don't, they didn't know at the time that uh, COVID could cause severe stomach uh, distress and that there were many different symptoms that went with it and that uh, children especially could end up with um, issues uh, related to um, inflammation and so on. There, there, was, there was just no knowledge about it. And so basically when we went with them, it was, they had, the nurses kept looking at us kind of with a funny look on their faces, like they knew something, but they couldn't really talk about it. I know that sounds paranoid, but I have since spoken with some nurses and uh, and a doctor about it. And this is this was true at the time is that they were told to downplay and um, basically uh, deny, 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 deny. And nobody had COVID at the time. That was the word. That was what they were told. Nobody, you don't say. And actually, they didn't even call it COVID at the time. It's called coronavirus at that point. And because I mean, a coronavirus is many different types of viruses, but as they were still calling it the coronavirus. And they were told, absolutely nobody has the coronavirus, and we're not testing anybody with it unless they're critical. Anyway, so, but they all knew there was a, something going around in the area that was knocking people down, even healthy men, uh, firefighters, police officers, you know, athletes, and it was knocking them down for two and a half weeks. would start with this horrible gastric distress and then would develop into a severe respiratory illness. Not COVID, though. No, COVID doesn't do that, or coronavirus doesn't do that. Anyway, long story short, we did end up getting him under control, and he suffered for a couple weeks. Well, he was fine. He ended up being fine, and my wife got it a couple days later. He was still at the point where we were still, you know, he wasn't quite fully potty trained yet, 
So she still had to deal with that. So that's a very easy way to contract it. Um, so she contracted it. Then my mother contracted it because my mother had to take care of him because I wasn't able to take care of him because I was working. Um, and uh, so they both got it very rapidly and same, I, you know, same thing, same symptoms. And they, they both recovered relatively easily from it, maybe a week, week and a half. And then I got it and I only had it for a day and it went away and I was excited. I was like, oh, well, hey, you know, it didn't get me. That's great. At the time, we were still operating under the assumption that this was some sort of very, very unusual virus, although two very unusual viruses going around at the same time seemed a bit strange, but not unheard of, right? And then um, about a Friday after I recovered, maybe seven days after I recovered, it was a Friday, um, and uh, I ended up, um, I think it was a Friday, I ended up having uh, what turns out was a cytokine storm, which is where your entire body decides to attack itself to try to get rid of a pathogen that it can't get rid of. So I had not fought off the virus. In fact, what had happened is my body had tried to fight the virus, but hadn't really understood what to do with it. So my body said, mm, okay, and just kind of walked off into the sunset. But by the time things got really bad, the body essentially went into shutdown mode and started killing off all its cells. I had this really extremely horrible uh, crash where I couldn't breathe. And they, there are hundreds of... Uh, testimonials about people with uh covid that ended up with this you can read it if you like it's gruesome stuff basically the only thing i can say is that uh, my hands my body were, was on fire uh, my heartbeat was up like about 150 beats per minute i couldn't breathe it uh, i could breathe but it felt like i was getting no oxygen it was as if um the only sensation i can compare it to is if you're doing a long swim and you get to that point you just can't swim anymore, but you have to because if you don't keep swimming, you will drown. And that's kind of where I was at. And for an hour and a half, I breathed. I forced my body to breathe because my body wasn't breathing on its own. I had to actually think and sensationally control my ribs and my diaphragm and everything and get everything to move in and out. Worst thing of my life. And then uh, when that stopped, I was able to kind of get up and move around a little bit, but I was so dizzy and so nauseous. And like my eyes were blurred. I couldn't think straight. Um, I was so weak that I, I couldn't pee. I couldn't do anything. It was like um, for a day, I just had to kind of like crawl around and recover. And then I couldn't breathe. I felt like I had, uh, what's that stuff? Uh, not asbestos, but uh, the, the insulation stuff there. That pink insulation, whatever it's called. I felt like I had that in my lungs, like little stabby little needles everywhere inside my lungs when I breathe. Same also, sensations you get is if you breathe in a breath of campfire. I like just lead your head and just breathe that smoke in. I had that for like uh, three months. It felt like that. It was like breathing through a blanket of wool. Um, anyway, so after that, these incidences would occur where I would be fine for a few days. I would recover. I'd slowly build my strength back up. I'd have another one of these crashes. And this happened uh, maybe 10 times in a row. So all the way through May, and I was going to doctors, I was getting tested, I was being told it was in my head, I was being told these are panic attacks. As I've said, I've been honest about my, my mental uh, issues in the past, my, uh, my mental health issues, and I know what panic attacks are, and panic attacks are not like that. That's complete, this is a completely different thing. Anyway, I had to fight with a lot of doctors and talk to a lot of people and argue a lot. And I finally found out that there was a thing called long COVID, which is symptoms that develop after you've had COVID and everything matched up. And actually, they didn't have, they didn't have a test, te uh, type of it as long COVID at that point. It was just called post-viral syndrome. And that it was especially common now with COVID. This was like about maybe May or June and uh, they were just starting to reveal this, that this was a problem and this was going to be a huge problem. Well, I was one of the first people documented with it, uh, but couldn't get anybody to listen because I didn't have a positive test. Nobody could give me a test at the time. And, I, you know, there was just no COVID tests around. Um, so anyway, long story short, I did have textbook symptoms of long COVID. And I'll describe those in a minute, but um, it took a, almost a year and a half before I could get it documented because of the, the strangeness of the situation. It wasn't until I caught COVID the second time that finally I had a positive test and I could then say, okay, well, and then we would go through and say, well, now we can quantify these symptoms. Symptoms of long COVID 
um, are too many to list, but the most general ones are uh, chronic fatigue, which is you do something and then you need to literally rest for the rest of the day, like change out the laundry, walk up a set of stairs. Uh, difficulty breathing is one. High heart rate, even when sleeping, resting, whatever. Uh, you'll have these sudden oxygen dips and these sudden oxygen flare-ups. Dizziness, nausea, uh, complete incapacitation, tingling in your hands and feet. My feet, I still have no feeling in my feet, pretty much. Well, I have feeling. Like, I can feel pain if I poke around. But it almost feels like my feet uh, are in, encased in ice. Like, they're constantly, there's no touch sensation to them unless I, like, literally really push on them. Uh, hundreds of other symptoms that go around with it. But the main ones that, that were tough to deal with was I couldn't, I couldn't read. Like, I couldn't focus on things. Like, my vision was terrible. I had brain fog. I had difficulty breathing. Um, like I said, going up and down the stairs was almost impossible. Uh, fatigue to the point where it's like I couldn't, I couldn't do the things. Insomnia, that was the other one. It was, uh, ironically enough, at the time helped me with my, my content creation, my streaming, because I couldn't sleep anyway. So I would stay up and I would just create content and then I would crash. Luckily, I could work from home and I had a very supportive uh, work situation that was able to help me with this. But anyway, eventually it took almost a year and a half to get on board with a doctor that, two doctors had mentioned it to me, but the one that finally convinced me was an actual infectious disease specialist who convinced me to change my diet. So I had to change, completely change my diet. It was called an elimination diet, which is basically you take everything out. And then all you're allowed to eat is very basic things. Like my, my, my basic nutrition for almost a complete month was green tea, water, Cheerios, and oatmeal. A little bit of fruit here and there, a little bit of vegetables here and there, but no, like I could, I could very sparingly have meat. I couldn't have dairy. Um, and eventually that kind of pulled me out of it because like literally they, they would just... I would spend days where I, I just couldn't do anything. I, my son would want to play with me and I'd have to lay on the floor with him and kind of move the toys around, like laying on the floor like I was a fish out of water, pretending I was not, um, not feeling like I was dying, you know what I mean? Um, so the diet helped tremendously. It got me to a, almost 100% uh, eventually. And... So we're talking 2020 all the way to what now? It's going to be 2024 coming up. So it's going to be four years. The last two years have not been as bad. Um, but one of the major things in this, I, I, I did kind of leave this off. One of the major things, because this, this is not 100% part of long COVID. It's part of COVID slash long COVID slash possible things with other stuff. I'm not going to say the V word because there's another topic that YouTube doesn't like at all that I'm not going to go into, um, but heart disease and um, what I'm dealing with now and what I deal with off and on once a year, usually winter time, like fall into winter time, and sometimes once again, spring into summer, I end up with um, what literally feels like uh, heart failure and um, when I don't have that, on the months where I don't have that, I also have um, mild chronic fatigue. Uh, an example of which would be I'll sleep 10 hours and then I'll be at work and I'll be working on something and I will literally, my eyes will close and I will snore and open my eyes. Yes, I understand that that sounds like narcolepsy, but it's actually just because I, I'm so fatigued. Um, and then there's other episodes where the fatigue goes away and I have that rampant insomnia again. So for those of you familiar with my content creation, especially my live stuff on Twitch, will notice I spend two to three weeks where I will be on constantly. And then there'll be two to three weeks where I could barely keep a schedule. And this is what's happening now is I either run into the situation where I can't stay awake past nine o'clock because I'm so fatigued, and sometimes I'm even fatigued during the day at work, and I have to sleep right away when I get home, and then um, right away before I stream. <sighs> and 
And the other part is uh, sometimes when I'm not dealing with that, I deal with uh, chest pains uh, that can mimic symptoms of a heart attack. But I mean, I've been literally hooked up to every device known to man while these symptoms have occurred. And I've been told that there's nothing wrong with my heart except for the fact that the heart rate is elevated and there are instances where I, um, where I do have uh, palpitations. Unfortunately for my content creation, this creates a terrible situation where I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. If I stay up and I create content, it makes my fatigue worse. If I don't create the content, I still have the fatigue the next day and sometimes can't make up the next day. And then on days where I feel fine, sometimes I have the heart problems. Um, and I don't want to mess around with heart disease and lack of sleep. So if, if it is like chest pains and feelings of, of uh, myocarditis or whatever, and they did check for that and there was just a little bit, a little bit of swelling, but not much. Um, but I don't want to mess around with that, you know? So it's like, even when I'm good, I'm ready to go and I can do it. I don't want to because I don't want to mess, take the chance then I'm going to miss some sleep and then make this thing explode and go off the deep end. And then, of course, there's the mental strain I've been under uh, with this going on. And also with other mem members of my family developed it since. And there's a lot of people out there that want to pretend COVID never happened. They want to pretend COVID wasn't that bad. They want to pretend it didn't kill people. They want to pretend that long COVID is a bunch of people that are malingerers or making things up or, uh, you know, or it's, it's in their head. It's psychosomatic. I went from being a perfectly healthy 46 year old man, super healthy to feeling like I was a 78 year old man with COPD, uh, and heart disease and neur neuropathy. I could barely do anything for months. And even now when I can do things and I call myself 90% better, the 10% that's not better is, is so life altering that it, it just has screwed up whatever um, things that I wanna try to accomplish and my goals that, that I wanna have in my off time. Thankfully, I'm able to do everything that I can do as a father and everything that I need to do, well, mostly everything that I need to do as an employee. And so I'm not like in trouble, like in danger of losing my job or like, you know, I still enjoy my family life. And as I've told people, I, I have another inner secret that's a good one, which is that I am probably the happiest man on the planet. And a lot of people laugh when I say that because the people that know me are like, you don't seem too happy. But believe me, when I am outside in my yard on a nice day and I see my kid and I see my wife and I see my house and I see everything that I have, I freaking love life and I love everything about it and I am super freaking happy 90% of the time. And... When I'm not happy, it's more about this, what's going on with this, or, you know, if like, I mean, there's some usual disappointments and stuff, but I, I honestly wonder sometimes if I've made it to a stage of enlightenment that, that is kind of like not talked about because like literally to me, life is freaking, it's just the most greatest, the most greatest, the greatest and one most wonderful thing that I can ever describe like I, I love even small moments I even love like the anguish and silly things that go on um, I don't love this part and this is the one part that that you know kind of puts a little wrench into it um, but I'm happy I'm very very happy and so like I don't want to come off as like oh poor me poor me which is why I put off putting this video up because I don't want to come off as poor me I think I'm fine and I don't think there's long term health consequences for this uh, but it does rob me of one of my greatest joys which is interacting with people and creating content that makes people smile 
or gives them that little extra boost for the day. And I've heard it so many times. People have said, you got me through a rough time. And, you know, I, I watched your stream or like I listened to your stream at night when I couldn't sleep and when I was having these insomnia things. And that was the whole point. It was like to create something that people enjoy. So to have that kind of like taken from me is difficult. And a lot of times I play it off like I'm taking a night off or I'm like, I'm doing this or I'm doing that. It's like, I'm, you know, um, but for those of you that were around from 20, 2019 until 2021, you'll remember I had to be forced to take nights off usually. Like I, there was a period where I, I did every night and I was trying to get to 500 straight nights. Um, like I would, I would stream every night if I could. But the fact of the matter is streaming at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., until 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and then working, getting up at 6, getting my son ready, getting out to work, and working a full day, then dealing with all the home stuff, and then coming back and doing it again has gotten um, damn near impossible. And I don't have another schedule slot for it. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting streaming. I'm not ending the stream. I'm not ending content creation. All I'm asking is that uh, you understand that the reason I am having scheduling difficulties is not because I don't enjoy being there and it's not because I don't want to be there and it's not because I don't take this seriously. I don't value people's time. I do. I really do. And I appreciate everything that everybody has ever done for me. It's been more than anybody could have ever expected when this all started. For a while, it looked like it was going to blow up and it was going to be kind of going to become really big. Um, and that was great. But when I started this, I literally said, if, if I could see five people on a night, I'd be happy. And I see more than five people on a night when I stream. And that to me is, is amazing. And I love you guys for it. I really appreciate it. And all I'm asking is that you understand that um, I am trying and I'm trying to get on as often as I can. Um, but when you add in the health factors, the fatigue, then you add in other family members having issues, sometimes getting sick or sometimes needing care or sometimes having to do other things in early in the morning or whatever. By the time I get to that, I end up in this like sometimes where I can't even stream two days a week. I'm going to do my best and make my best effort, at least until my 50th birthday, which is coming up this February 11th, by the way. I'm going to make an effort to be present as much as I can. I just ask that when I'm not, that you guys um, understand that it's not a flippant choice, that it's not something I just blow off and say, eh, whatever. It's excruciating to have to cancel. And a lot of nights I can't even put the message in Discord because I just feel so guilty and I feel so horrible about it. Because some nights, to be honest, I probably could. I probably could get on and stream. But the toll this has taken on me leaves me incapable sometimes. And I just, uh, I hope everybody understands that. And again, this is not for sympathy. I don't want, oh, you know, uh, I just want, to have this out there so that people don't think that this is like, um, I don't know that, that I've, that I've lost interest in entertaining and providing content. I have it at all. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite. I want to do it more than ever. Um, so I'm still here. I'm still pushing forward and, uh, hopefully as we go forward, uh, you guys will be there with me and we'll enjoy some good times coming up but i did want to just at least get the full story on the record and just have it out there so if i do need something to point to and say just go watch the video because it's too hard to explain uh it's too emotional to explain sometimes and i don't want to have to explain it every time so this is my every time explanation right here you heard it here first i have long covid and it hasn't gone away and it's gotten better but not better enough to make it that it's not an issue so that is uh, the video thank you for listening and uh if you find it in your heart if you have not already like and subscribe uh like and sub i said subscribe right i don't know if it's a subscribe i don't know like and subscribe visit us on twitch twitch.tv forward slash com little buddy 
usually on weeknights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, sometimes a little later than that. Um, promote the videos, get your friends, get everybody involved, and we'll see if we can uh, make this community grow even better. I'm hoping in the new year um, to make another push. I've decided I'm going to make another push. I'm not giving up uh, come January 1st, so I got a little angry. So we're going to see if there's a little bit of fire. That being said, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. I'm not going to make it any longer than it has to be. And uh, I will see you guys uh, the next live broadcast or the next video that we put out. Thank you so much. Love you all.